thank you, Andrew, for joining us again. So it looks like you in Italy. Uh, Correct. Been in, been in altitude for a couple of weeks now. <laughs> well, before I jump on the first question, as we let's just keep our tradition going, tell us uh, in general what you have in plans for the next uh, four weeks in your training. So the uh, race season is now getting ever closer. And this is going to be my last full four-week block before the race season kicks off. My first race is uh, mid-November. So it's really getting uh, pretty close to the time when, we, uh, when we're going to start racing. So for me, what I'm going to have focus on is uh, I'm going to start having a little bit more focus on the top end speed, race speed, shorter intervals, higher intensity. But at the same time, it's still a long time until the Olympics for me, which is the main goal this season. So I don't want to drop volume too much. Um, so I want to keep in my long, I want to keep in a long classic roller ski, a long skate roller ski, a long double pole session and a long run each week. Um, but my intervals, I'm going to try and keep at least three of the four weeks, I want to keep one of the intervals we've talked about previously, where I have a good volume of time on the interval session, an hour progressive sort of intervals. But the other intervals I'm going to do, I'm going to shorten down the length. So instead of doing 10 minute intervals, I'm going to shorten down the length to four or five minutes, um, probably about 30 minute in duration, plus minus, um, and have longer longer breaks in the intervals. So I'm a big fan of one minute breaks throughout the summer, whereas now I'm going to go two to three minute rest between intervals and try and increase the intensity on each interval. So I'm going to start off a little bit harder, still going to have progressive uh, increase throughout the session, but I'm going to start off harder and finish off as hard as I can on the last two intervals where it's four or five minutes. So that's the main plan for me. I'm going to continue with, like I've talked about the last uh, few blocks with block periodization. So two to three intervals, um, uh, three out of the four weeks. And then one of the four weeks, I will put in four to five intervals. So a little bit more intensity, but then I'll lower the volume, the total volume that week to be able to, um, cope with the, the load of the intervals. So instead of doing 25 hours to 30 hours of volume, total volume that week, I'll drop down to 15-ish hours that week. So that's my general plan. Okay, excellent. Uh, let me now jump into questions. How do you handle returning to training after a period of illness like a cold, throat, chest infection, etc. If you got sick on the week scheduled for big volume, how do you adjust your micro plan? First and foremost, the most important thing is to take the time to be fully recovered before you start getting back into training. You don't want to like try and jump back into things before you're fully recovered because that will just end up that you're going to be tired, the quality of training is going to be low and you might just deplete your body. Um, so priority number one is get healthy. And then I would take, it depends a little bit on how long you've been ill. If I've been ill for uh, a week, then I'll do like, and I'll wait until I start um, fully healthy. Then I'll have one or two days where I build up the training to get back to, to full uh, volume of training. And then depending on how much you've missed and what week you've missed, I would uh, analyze what I've done so far in this four week block and what my main goals are. So for me in the next period, my main goal is the intensity and getting up towards race pace and pushing high intensity because we're getting close to the race season. So if I missed a volume block, I would probably not be so worried and I wouldn't try and push the volume I would have focus on the intervals and make sure that I'm still getting in my big or my higher intensity week in the block periodizations. Um, but if you're further away from the race season and your races aren't important, races aren't until 
after Christmas, then maybe I would think, okay, the most important is to keep getting the volume. So maybe I would have more focus on a week with volume rather than stressing about getting in a super intense week with lots of intervals. Just depends a little bit on your situation. But it's all about making sure you're ready to get back to training and then being a little bit sensible about it. Uh, what percentage of training is done on roller skis versus on foot this time of year for you, Andrew? Um, it's fairly similar to uh, throughout the summer. Um, but I, I think my training gets a little bit more specific as I get close to the race season. So um, I would say I a little bit less, a little bit less running, um, pro probably around 75% roller ski to running, maybe, a, maybe even 80%. Um, but I still try and get in a long run each week. And I do quite a few running intervals as well, or bound, uh, hill bounded intervals and stuff like that. So I do, I do have some other st stuff in that's not as ski specific. Do you do any classic training on snow skis, on the grass, wood chips, sand, etc.? cetera? Uh, I've grown up in uh, north of Scotland where we have this crazy little um, dry ski slope cross country track. So I've grown up doing a ton of that on uh, classic skis in Scotland. But since I've moved to Norway, um, last 10 years i haven't done anything like that i've seen some of the french guys and the russians do some though but uh, me personally i think um techniques a little bit different than what it's going to be on snow anyway so i think uh, for me i probably get just as much out of classic roller skiing as i do out of that okay good to know uh okay do you sharpen your roller ski pole tips before each training session that's a technique yeah <laughs> uh, I find I find my tips before every session. Um, like it takes thirty seconds. If you do it every session, they're not that blunt. Super quick to do, and it can affect the quality of the session massively. If you're doing a double pole interval and your poles are sliding all over the place and you're getting no grip, then the whole the quality of the whole session just ends up being a lot worse than if you're just taking that one minute to sharpen your tips. Um, so I definitely recommend you keeping on top of that. Excellent. Uh, and then the last question I have on the list, maybe uh, folks that listening have more questions. Uh, do you do any agility exercises on roller skis? Uh, you know, like jumps, backboard skating, uh, you know, tight uh, slalom through the cones, etc. cetera. Um, I used to do more. And I think I probably should do more than I do. Um, I, I talked about earlier in the year, um, when I'm doing warming up for speed and things like that, I quite often do, or as part of a speed session, like short sprint sessions, I, do, I try to do running on my classic skis on slight downhills and things like that. And that ends up being very much agility. And then I also do speed, try and do like 10 second sprints round tight corners and things to practice cornering. But I don't do so much specific stuff round cones um, as I used to do. But I do think it is a very constructive thing to do and I think I would probably benefit from it because uh, if you watch World Cup racing, I am definitely not one of the uh, best cornerers on the, on the circuit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's uh, all the questions I have on my list. Uh, anyone have any questions from uh, participants on this Zoom call? Just related to that last discussion, do, uh, Andrew, do you go, if you're doing agility, do you go to a slower speed roller ski or, or do you try to keep your really fast rolling going? Um, I, to be honest, I do the most, the majority of my training on, uh, the, sa the same roller ski. So I use Swix uh, C3 Classics and Marwi 6 Skate. So they're sort of mid-range uh, and I use them for pretty much everything. Um, sometimes on Classic, I'll use um, 
borrow some of the folks uh, number four wheels which are even heavier or like uh, low, slower and higher resistance but that's more on long sessions to just get a bit of a more more muscular uh, uh, type of training but for the for agility I would do I would just do that on the normal skis to be honest thank you Andrew thank you again for joining us and uh, enjoy Italy and We'll talk yeah, soon. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, good luck with the next four weeks of training, guys. Get in the intensity. Um, uh, and I'm going to start, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers with some snow coming soon, or I get back home in uh, a week's time. So then I'm going to start crossing my fingers for it snowing. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Enjoy, guys.